So today, as you all know, we begin the study of the book Vedanta Treatise, The Eternities. That's the title. And before getting into that, just for some of you who may be new, what exactly is Vedanta? What is this Vedanta philosophy? See, the word Vedanta is a combination of two words, two Sanskrit words. Veda means wisdom, knowledge. Anta means ultimate, culmination, the end. So quite literally, Vedanta means the culmination of wisdom, the end of knowledge. The highest knowledge and why it's the highest knowledge is because it gives clear logical principles of living what all of us want are three things primarily you want to be happy peaceful right you also want to be successful productive in your field of action in the world, whatever field you're in. So you want peace, you want success. This is with regards to your life in the world. And whether or, whether or not you know it, each one of us seeks that ultimate state of infinite peace, happiness, fulfillment. It's called self-realization, enlightenment. So these are the three goals of life. It's called in the, in the Gita, he calls it Siddhim, which is success, Sukham, happiness, Param Gatin, the supreme goal. So Vedanta philosophy talks about how to achieve all three. And it's based on sound, logic and reason. That's the beauty. It's not the opinion of one person. It's a, it's a science. It's called Brahma Vidya, the science of the self. Just as physics is based on scientific principles, it's a discovery of physical laws. Vedanta is based on life principles. It's the manual for life. Hmm. You seem to have a manual for everything, right? You have a manual for your phone, for your TV, for your computer, everything, for your car. But where's the manual for your life? On what principles are you basing your life? So you will find that nobody is taught this, nobody knows this. Therefore, what is the result? So at the individual level, you find stress, addictions, depression, divorces, as a rule, everywhere. And on a world level, I don't want to, I don't have to tell you the devastation going on. There's war, there's terrorism, there's corruption, there's greed, literally destroying, tearing apart the human race. All this boils down to the fact that people are not taught the basic principles of living. Hmm. So this is what Vedanta is all about. It's a manual for your life. Now with regard to this book in particular called the Vedanta Treatise, it is important to understand the reason it was written and how important it is for humanity and in this day and age. So going back to the origin of Vedanta, so thousands of years ago in ancient India, see if you read the primeval textbooks, the Vedas, they, they say it, you know, that uh, the milk flowed like rivers, 
the grains were bursting you know they had, there was so much prosperity but they found these great thinkers analyzed and found that by increasing the outside facilities and wealth whatever wealth was those days they were not getting any happier it's a very interesting flow of thought which happened thousands of years ago that's how this whole knowledge started so they started looking within to find out what life is all about and those days it so happened that a majority of the society was interested in this pursuit and it has never happened since it was called satya yuga the the age of truth so this knowledge was discovered and given out in the form of very terse and cryptic statements called mahavakyas there were four mahavakyas means great statements which we did those of you who completed the book uh, we were doing that the definition of the truth the uh declaration the definition the declaration the advice to the seeker and then the path and the culmination which uh, i won't get into now because that's uh, that's for another day but they were give this truths were given in the form of very terse statements that thou art was the second statement you are the self but those days the people's intellect was strong enough pure enough to understand these truths they used to reflect and think and understand it and after a while maybe hundreds or thousands of years they were not able to understand so they had to explain these statements and those are the first textbooks of human philosophy called the upanishads which are in the vedas where they explain these truths in fact that is the foundation for the philosophy of vedanta is the upanishads and then thousands of years after the upanishads nobody understood the upanishad the vedas themselves had become completely divorced from people's lives that was the time of krishna the time of the mahabharata so they understood krishna understood vyasa understood that people no longer understood the vedas they had become addicted to the rituals and the non essentials much like today their people were doing these rituals and practices and prayers for their own selfish purpose in fact it's written in the gita so the gita was taught and composed 700 verses to explain those three words tattva masi you are the self in fact we learn the gita right verse by verse on sundays i'm talking the gita is about uh, thousands of years ago right way before buddha buddha was 500 bc way before that in fact buddha also said don't be addicted to the rituals they thought it's a new religion there's no such thing he was just attacking the ritualistic addiction philosophy is the same and then 1200 years ago which is about 800 ad there was a saint in south india called shankaracharya who adi shankara the first shankara and he understood that people no longer understood even the gita see how it's happened i'm talking about the deterioration so he wrote introductory textbooks bhaja govinda mati uh, called the bhaja govinda atma bodha tattva bodha you know and he wanted to bring the knowledge of the gita to the common person so you come to the present day now we're talking about my guru swami ji is 95 the author of this book we're talking 60 years ago 65 years ago when he started his 
70 years ago started his spiritual journey so he was researching all these books and he realized that there is no book now nobody understands bhaju govinda mahatma bodha who understand simply they chant it nobody knows what it is so the need of the hour was to present this whole philosophy of life in contemporary thought and language and english was chosen because it is the language which most people throughout the world know right the what, what do you choose you choose sanskrit nobody knows choose hindi it is a few people any language you choose so english had the potential to expose this knowledge to the world so that is the greatness of this book you will not find so it took him 25 years to research conceptualize write so it is literally the modern scripture for humanity because it contains the entire philosophy vedanta is not a philosophy of india or it is a philosophy of life it is it is the underlying knowledge of all the religions please understand that it's the it's the it's life principles in fact one of the names for vedanta is sanatana dharma which means eternal principles these are principles that's it hmm. gravity is a principle motion is a principle physical principles so there are spiritual mental principles of life you got to learn it hmm. so here is a book where you will be taught from day 1 from from the basics right till the end so even if you've learnt it you have to go back that's what most of you have been learning you got to come back and start it again because it's too too deep to understand without that repetition so this is where we are you get it so this is his swami ji has written many books as you all know many of you know but this is the book which contains the whole philosophy so what we'll be doing in these weekly sessions is taking it up page by page word by word so you have a full grounding of what to do how to learn it and if you have any questions or clarifications you can always ask them there's no problem as long as it's relevant and to the text to the point okay so you have the book i can you show in case anybody doesn't have yes. so it's it's there in the this is a book uh most of you saw it in the email and all it was there right and uh, if you want the e version or whatever that is also there on, on all the platforms so that there's no problem whatever and you can i'm order it amazon etc so we'll start with the preface of the vedanta treatise that word some of you may be wondering the eternities if you look up chambers the eternities means the supreme reality it's a very interesting word because you won't hear this word the eternities you hear eternity but nobody it is actual english word is not made up is hmm? what is the eternities you read, you can see it in the you can see it in the in the dictionary the definition will be there vedanta treatise treatise means a complete work of an uh, dealing with a subject so vedanta treatise is the complete work dealing with the philosophy of vedanta even that treatise name has a meaning the eternities what is the subject matter the supreme reality so a complete work of vedanta dealing with the supreme reality of life that is the meaning of that title itself so everything is thought of very carefully you'll see it every word 
so the book is now in its uh, the print version is probably in its 18th uh, which is which edition is this the new one huh? this is an older one so 18th huh the one you have I have 16th. 18th. So the latest one is the 18th edition. So it's not a... Uh, and it was fully rewritten in 2004, I remember, just before I... Right? Before we came here to the US. Before I came to the US to... Yeah, to, uh, to start this uh, Vedanta here. But... Uh, so it's... it's What I'm trying to tell you all, it's been... Uh, over 40 years since it's been circulating amongst the people so it's uh, it's the complete works the complete works of Vedanta hmm. right so the pre who is that Jai Shri yes you have a question your hand is up must be a mistake hmm? Hmm? you may not even know okay he put it down hmm. preface Vedanta Treatise, The Eternities, Preface The Vedanta Treatise presents the ancient philosophy of Vedanta, a philosophy which enunciates the eternal principles of life and living. Living is an art, a skill, a technique. Few have understood it to be so in the span of human history. Nevertheless, you need to learn and practice the technique of living as you would for playing a musical instrument or flying an aircraft. Hmm. So, see, this is the famous quotation, if you will see, uh, in a lot of Swamiji's website and living is an art, a skill, a technique. Hmm. Few have understood this so in the span of human history. Hmm. Very interesting. So, see you understand tennis is a technique, right? You see a pro tennis player playing beautifully. See some of these guys, I've watched tennis sometimes so Every shot is two inches from the line. It's so precise, you know, it's just unbelievable. You try and hit it, you go, it will not even in the court, forget to, yeah. so precise, they're shots. But it's not that you just come and hit it. It is years and decades of training to get to that level. It's a skill. You see a full symphony playing, some of you who have seen it, is unbelievable. Hundreds of followers, exactly synchronized. How much training it takes? How much practice? It's, it's inconceivable. This you understand. What about life? Hmm? If I ask you, what life? What life? Hmm? I'm living. No, what's your problem? Hmm? Oh, and, and not my problem. That is it. It's your problem. You have no clue. What are the principles, the technique of life? Nobody. I have lived 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. By the fact that you've lived, you believe you know how to live. It's absolutely absurd. How have you lived? Why don't you analyze? One sentence the spouse has to say and your temper is gone, blown up. You shut up, I shut up. This is how you're living all the time. Disharmony. Obviously, there's something wrong somewhere, right? So, he says, you need to learn this. That's what Vedanta treatise is all about. The eternal principles of life and living. As you would for playing a musical instrument or flying an aircraft. Flying an aircraft is an even better example. Because imagine you're on the, in the cockpit, you don't know how to fly. What will happen? You'll crash. It's like that. Life is like that. You don't know. So all this stress and agitation and conflict is the crash, the result of 
not knowing how to live. Devastating. Absolutely devastating. See, I guess, uh, yesterday I was talking to one of the world's top companies, you know, uh, seminar. I was telling them, uh, these, uh, one psychiatrist told me, it's not, I'm not, it's not here, so he says, there are 44 million prescriptions for Ambien in the US, just last year. 44 million. He says that's one anti-sleeping uh, tablet. He says we prescribe dozens like that. Dozens. I said, what do you mean dozens? Do uh, one doesn't work, another one, another one doesn't. Hmm? So he says, sometimes two also we have to. Hmm? One for anxiety, one for. It's not a joke. You, we're, we're, it's, it's a serious matter. Hmm? So you can sleep at night, congratulate yourself. You know how many people can't sleep? Literally, you must understand if you're able to hit the pillow and sleep. Forget 30 seconds. That's what Swamiji says. 30 seconds you should fall off to sleep. That I know is not possible. Hmm? Uh, but even 30 minutes is a... <laughs> it's a, At least you're sleeping, right? Hmm? Hundreds of millions can't sleep. Hmm? Not learnt how to live. The world today is unaware of this process of learning. It is not taught in a school or university, nor in a moral or religious institution. Thus people go through a mechanical way of living, merely following a routine of their predecessors. They lack this fundamental knowledge of living and become victims of stress and strain. People everywhere have lost the pleasure in action. They try to find peace and happiness by abstaining from action. Hence, everyone looks forward to weekend and vacation. Even seeks premature retirement from work. This is a human weakness. Do not fall a prey to it. If you cannot find peace and happiness in action, you can never find it through abstaining. See, what he's doing in the preface is to make you aware why you need to learn this. Number one, he said, living is an art, it's a skill. You don't have the skill. That's why you become victimized by all these problems and stress. Number two, what is the problem? He's saying, huh? Second problem. Unaware. Hmm? We are unaware. Nobody is aware that living is an art, it's a skill. Now what are you going to do? Hmm? You go to the educational institutions, they are aware? No clue. Your parents are aware? No clue. Your friends, your family, where do you learn this? No awareness. You don't know, nobody else is aware. So you're lost. Then he gives the manifestation. One of the manifestations of wrong approach to life is the approach to work. Hmm? Ask anybody who's working. What do you look forward to? Fridays. Hmm? Weekends. And in three weeks, I'm going for my vacation. Hmm? Spring break. That's why I'm broken. Hmm? <laughs> Breaks after. Everybody's broken. That's why you need a break. Hmm? See, do you realize the absurdity of the whole thing? So you look forward to getting away from what you're doing to make you happy. You don't see the absurdity in that. Nobody sees. The boss will tell you, yeah, I understand, man. It's one more day. Just, just manage today, Friday. We understand. Because he's waiting to get away. What kind of work is he going to make you do? His boss is waiting to get away. 
If you are the boss, you are waiting to get away. How can you inspire your employees? That's what he says. Ask a youngster. Ask any youngster, what is your goal? Ask a 20 year old. By 40, I should retire. I should have 10 million or 20. This is a goal. The goal is not to work. That's what he says. Remember that. If you cannot find happiness in work, you will never find it by escaping from work. You can't. It's not possible. You try whatever you want. You can't. You can take a vacation. You should not need a vacation. I've said this many times. You can take a vacation. Nothing wrong. With it. But you should not need a vacation. They're two different things. So Vedanta will help you get the inspiration back. You will look forward to Monday mornings. Hmm? What is it? It's, it's, it's all the right attitude. If you enjoy your work, why would you want to get away from it? Hmm? Imagine if I came to this class, oh, today is Saturday morning. God, man. <laughs> now I have to look at the fellows on the screen. Terrible. Which is, I, looking at the... All these faces, it, I mean, don't turn it off because at least I need some audience. <laughs> Most of the fellows turned off because they know they'll be running around here, there, coffee, this, that, so they turn off their way. I need somebody to look at, no? So, imagine if I came with that attitude. That's how you go to work. <laughs> you, you stand, okay, you don't believe me. Uh, you go uh, Lincoln Tunnel, Lincoln Tunnel, right? The one main one, or Holland Tunnel, Holland Tunnel closer to us, to into Manhattan. And you just stand there, park your car on the side, <laughs> tell the cops, huh, because the thing is a bomb, they're blowing it. So don't park your car and just stand there on a Monday morning and just see everybody's face going into that tunnel. <laughs> Take pictures. Hey, morose, as if you are going for a funeral, you know. And, and you take a picture on Friday afternoon reverse. Pa, pa, qua, ma, how, hey, let's go, you know. All waiting, music blasting loud. Why? Found, you lost the pleasure of work. Wrong attitude. That's all it is. Aparna, what happened to you? <laughs> Your hand has been up. Hmm. No, Kalkanji had a question. Huh. Uh, why does he say living is an art? Like, what is the art part of it? Art means there is a... It, it is something which has... See, you, you draw. Who's going to buy that painting? Right? <laughs> I paint. Now nobody is going to buy it. No. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh paints, there is a, there is a beauty in it, right? He knows how to paint. That's what he says, it's an art. It's something which you have to know. And he explains it, right? Like a skill. Hmm. You do carpentry and try to fix your couch, what will happen? Nobody can sit on it, it will break. You need a carpenter, he knows the art. So life is that, it's an art. It's a skill. It's a technique. He gives three words, right? Take whichever word you want. You don't like art, <laughs> take skill. You don't like skill, take technique. You don't like all three, shut the book. Now, what's the problem? Huh? Why are you making a big... Why is it art? Okay, skill. Okay, not skill, technique. Whichever... He's used three words, no, Aparna. Why are you... Poor man has tried three times. No. <laughs> don't blame him. Okay. Mm. The world presents two distinct classes of people. One class is active, productive, and prosperous. The Western world seems to fit into this category. But by their own admission, they have lost their peace of mind. 
while the other class of people is relatively peaceful and happy, but without much action. Since they lack action, they are not productive, prosperous. Some of the eastern countries face this problem. Thus, there is action without peace on one side and peace without action on the other. One wonders if it is possible to combine dynamic action with mental peace. Vedanta provides the answer. The few who have imbibed the knowledge of Vedanta, learned and practiced the technique of living, live a dynamic life of action while enjoying perfect peace and happiness within. Above all, the treatise helps you to evolve to greater heights in your own spiritual path. It provides you with the knowledge and guidance to reach the ultimate in human perfection, the goal of self-realization. Okay. See, the I told you yesterday I was speaking to this huge... Uh, company right and to their people and I have a list of topics for the corporate seminars we do and this is the most popular one they want you know what it is called success without stress success without stress that was a topic yesterday this is what he's saying here see it is a very very interesting paradox now you should think about it from your own life. You know the ashram where I studied this for 10 years, uh, Vedanta Academy, some of you have been there, right? It's between two villages. So a lot of, now of course it's developed much more. When I was there, it was literally a rural, even though it was between Mumbai and Pune, that area is rural, Karla, the village. Two villages on each side. And you go there and that at noon time, noon, literally in the middle of a weekday, there will be all fellows hanging around, able-bodied young men, women, just hanging around. But if you talk to them and, you know, I've been into their home so many times, academy food, or don't tell anybody those days, <laughs> academy food, sometimes you think you should go to the servant's home, you know, the fellows. He said, no, you come, I'll get you some. And see, they hardly have anything. Hardly. But they're peaceful. But none of you are living there. You all come here from there. <laughs> Why? Because there's peace, no doubt, but there's no dynamism. There's no production. There's no prosperity. Prosperity comes from action. Dynamism, nothing else. You've got to work. There's no work there. Hmm? Even now, you go at 9 o'clock in the morning, roads are empty. Right now, so you go to Bombay, Pune, 9 o'clock, 8.30. I was just there. And then I flew back here, right, at morning. I remember 5.15 at Newark Airport. Whole lot was full. Hmm? 5.30 in the 5.40 in the morning. Full, going to my reaction. But, like I said, each one going to the funeral. <laughs> Action is there, but uh, tremendous stress and strain and worry and anxiety. So, almost as a rule, friends, where you find peace, you don't find action. Where you find action, you don't find peace. You find a lot of stress. So, the beauty of practical Vedanta is that it teaches you how to have both. How you can be dynamic, active in your work, but completely peaceful inside. If you master this, it's not difficult. Some of you have told me, I keep getting emails and calls and this has changed my life and this has this. What does it mean? You say, I'm more peaceful, I'm better at my work. I'm... 
so this is what vedanta is it takes time but you will be able to achieve that it's not difficult but but this is what he's saying all the hap- all the peace and success in the world will not give you that satisfaction you seek it's temporary no doubt you need it get it but don't think it will satisfy you ultimately that's why he says here this is not a book for success without stress you understand that's that's besides the point of course it will help you so that's what he says above all the above all see that's the word you must the treatise helps you to evolve to greater heights in your spiritual path it provides you the knowledge and guidance to reach the ultimate in human perfection the goal of self realization so first you must all understand no doubt vedanta will help you in the world but that is not what will give you that purpose and satisfaction you are looking for that comes only with spiritual growth as a human being you will be peaceful within and you'll move towards the self until you hit enlightenment so that should be your focus in life no money no family no friends no health no wealth that is not going to give you the ultimate satisfaction you're looking for so remember that that's what this is all about ultimately the spiritual aspect of life yes uh, lenette you had a question go ahead you got to unmute yourself okay so the self realization as a goal so can you be alive in this world and still and be self realized like my understanding with self realization It's like each of us has our own world platform, so that's the highest platform. If I'm in that platform, I am still alive, right? Even if I'm self-realized in this world, and and then I. So the difference is how I respond to what's coming to me externally, and then you are still peaceful because you are in that platform. Yes. Not like it means you mm. died already because you reached the goal. No, no, no. It doesn't mean you die. Don't worry. I'm not asking. Vedanta is not saying die and you get to the self and drop dead. Okay, so don't worry about that. Uh, see, you you will learn that as we go along. Each one of us has a body, mind, intellect. The body, mind, intellect is different in all of us. Your body is different from my body. Your mind is different from my mind everybody's mind right but beyond the body mind intellect lies the self the soul the spirit whatever you want to call it self realization is when you understand that truth so that truth is the same for all of us it's not your truth or my truth that is a universal principle so a self realized soul understands his own self so they live in a world like you said on that plane they're completely unaffected you understand like all of us so that's enlightenment so that's the ultimate goal don't worry you get there we'll all come to you you don't you won't die we'll all come to you for guidance <laughs> whole lot will be there this is the ultimate the state of buddha krishna that is the state yes umesh yeah gautam ji you were talking about karma yoga earlier in one of the swami ji's lectures i briefly say karma yoga is you work in the spirit of service and sacrifice then you have uh, you surrender to transcendental uh, and that's what do you call that um 
And then the last one, Jnana Yoga, is when you realize that this waking state is not real. Mm. Then you become meditative and then self-realization comes. Now I can understand Bhakti Yoga, how to practice, the Karma Yoga, how to practice. How do you practice Jnana Yoga, which is really realizing that this waking state is not real? See, you're, you're bringing that out of context here. He's talking about how you start. The, at the physical level, you have to do selfless service, which is Karma Yoga. At the emotional level, just for those who may not be familiar, you have to practice devotion. That's called Bhakti. At the intellectual level, you have to understand the truths of life, which is what this book is all about. That's all he's saying. Having done that, you reach a high state of detachment. That's when you're ready for self-realization. That's the end. So that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about how in the world you are able to be peaceful, you're able to be productive till you get to that state. So continue gaining the knowledge at the intellectual level. That's what we're doing here, right? Okay. Trying to understand how life functions. Okay. Mm. So now he talks about how the book is organized, which is also very important. See, there's a lot of thought gone into this, the organization of the thought flow. See, people simply talk about Vedanta, they talk about philosophy, divinity and so many things. There is no organization of thought flow, especially in the spiritual field. How do you start from scratch and build yourself all the way to the ultimate truth? So you will see how beautifully the thought flow has been organized. The book is divided into three sections and each of them deals sequentially with various aspects of the knowledge. So, we'll do that. Hmm. The book contains 21 chapters spread over three sections. The first section introduces the concept of Vedanta to help those unfamiliar with it. The second deals more with its practical application, how Vedanta can be ingrained in your lives. The final section covers the highest tenets of its philosophy, culminating in the transcendental experience. It plows through human ignorance and delusion to discover the pristine glory of one's supreme self. Good. Vedanta treaties, the eternity. Section one, introduction to Vedanta. The first section introduces Vedanta to the lay person. Vedanta is a systematic knowledge which explains the meaning and purpose of your existence in the world, a knowledge that is founded on its own authority. It trains you to think for yourself, to analyze, investigate, and realize the quintessence of life, not to submit yourself to blind faith, superstitious belief, or mechanical ritual. Ultimately, it leads you to spiritual enlightenment. The knowledge of the unknown can be gained only through the use of known factors. Therefore, to unravel the mystery of God, you need to use the world of objects and beings known to you. Start with the study of the world, the individual, and the relationship between them. How are you to relate with the world to find peace and harmony? 
it is not the world that bothers you as you believe it to be but your relationship with it you need to learn the principles of right living change the character of your action from selfishness to selfless service mend the quality of your emotion from preferential attachment to universal love raise your knowledge from the mundane to the supreme self within thus you shall reach the culmination of human life the ultimate state of peace and bliss the goal of religion mm. see the the first section as it said here it's quite clear i'm just uh, clarifying is introducing you to what this philosophy is and how you apply it in your life that's what he says now the basic tenets are you must start with the known to get to the unknown see the purpose of life is unknown what is the nature of the reality or god is unknown right we don't know now you go to any so called spiritual teachers or what do they say they talk in things which you don't understand it's not going to work it's not going to help you you have to start with what you know and then go to the unknown hmm. so that's what vedanta starts with you start with what are the factors which you know there is you the individual there is the world subject object we start with that scientifically systematically not submitting yourself to blind faith superstitious belief mechanical ritual see you're taught to think for yourself you look at all the religions in the world it's in a decayed state because it's just mechanically doing rituals at the physical level there's a superstition at the emotional level and there's blind faith at the intellectual level so what kind of a result is going to come out of that you're seeing it fanaticism ignorance stress and strain you see everywhere in the world there's no harmony there's no peace at all because nobody thinks for themselves so what do you need to do he says you have to change your thinking completely see one of the famous quotes of einstein i was telling them yesterday so it's fresh in my head you know you cannot solve your problems with the same thinking that created those problems einstein see you have been thinking in a particular way all your life and that thinking has led you to where you are today so if you want your tomorrow to be better your thinking has to change the same thinking will have the same result that nobody understands so you got to change your own thought pattern don't blame the world world will be what it is and what do you have to change you got to change your action from selfish to selfless very difficult to do has to be done you have to change your emotions from preferential attachment my family my children my husband my 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 you got to change that it has to be a universal feeling of oneness with the universe that is spirituality but vedanta teaches you how to change it and you have to raise your knowledge from the mundane to the spiritual in the bhaj govinda me tells you right nitya anitya viveka vichara reflection upon the distinction between the real and the unreal between the temporary and the permanent that's how you got to elevate your thinking 
George Bernard Shaw says, read not times, read the eternities. In fact, he used that word, the eternities. Hmm? Read not times, read the eternities. Hmm? What are you interested in? Hmm? in times. What is that newspaper? Same nonsense every day repeated. You got to, you got to read the eternities. What is the truth? What doesn't change? Times change. So that's how you grow. The second part of the book is getting more into exactly what you need to do. What are the stages of spiritual development? So he's called it practical Vedanta. Hmm. Section 2 Practical Vedanta. The second section covers the practical application of Vedanta in life, explains the composition of a human being, the five layers of human personality enveloping the inner self, the three states of conditioned consciousness known as waking, dream and deep sleep. Every human being goes through the cycle of these states. None realizes the pure consciousness, the core of one's being. Vedanta directs you to discover the core, the supreme self within. Humans fall under four distinct classes depending on the development of their mind and intellect. The predominantly emotional, the predominantly intellectual, balanced in both, underdeveloped in both. Accordingly, the four paths of devotion, bhakti, knowledge, jnana, action, karma, and compulsion, hatha, are prescribed respectively for their spiritual development. Practicing these disciplines, the seeker evolves to the state of dispassion, which prepares him to enter the final stage of meditation. And through meditation, he reaches self-realization. A self-realized person is one with God. He revels in absolute peace and bliss, becomes a beacon for the rest of the world to follow and steer their lives towards evolution. See how carefully he is going to talk about the sequence of spiritual development. You understand? So first, he says, you must understand the constitution of your personality. The fact that you are not just the body, mind, intellect, which you believe yourself to be. He gives powerful pointers in the section that there is a permanent factor, the consciousness, the I, what you call as I all the time, I am a boy, I am a man, I am an old man. The boy, the youth, the man, the old man are changing, but the I is constant. That is yourself. So he talks about that. How it is beyond the waking dream deep sleep. We'll get to that. He's just giving an overview. But importantly, you must analyze what is your individual constitution. See, see how scientifically he's doing it. Some of you have not heard this before. It's a wake-up call. See, you have to know how emotional you are, how active you are, how intellectual you are. And then you have to do the prescribed spiritual practice in that proportion. If you're an emotional person and you go on learning philosophy, it's not going to work. You need emotion. If you're intellectual and you're asked to do rituals and practices, it's not going to work. You need knowledge. So you've got to find out what is your proportion. 
and having done these three courses action devotion knowledge consistently you reach a state of detachment and that alone qualifies you for meditation nowadays meditation is practiced as a is like a gym class you know you go to the gym i go for meditation i mean there is no head or tail what you do is it meant it's the highest practice and through meditation you get to self realization the ultimate state so what are we talking what are we talking that's what he talks about here and a, a self realized soul that's the ultimate achievement so he is saying he revels in that absolute peace and bliss and their lives are dedicated to helping others come out of this mess that's all they do hmm. is great masters and the third section we'll take up questions next time because i want to finish the at least the preface the third section talks about the essence of vedanta i don't know how many of you will be there till i start that part of the book <laughs> but that is the because now i know today how many are there uh, 140 tomorrow uh, next class will be 120 third class uh, 80 uh, 60 uh, this is a constant by the time we get to the last section god knows how many not that i am complaining because there is no point i have been doing this many too too long to to have any expectations but that's the real philosophy if you really want to know what life is he talks about yeah you read that is just a short paragraph section 3 the essence of vedanta the third section expounds the real philosophy of life exposes the exact nature of the terrestrial world points out the transcendental reality beyond the phenomenal world helps you discover that underlying reality to be the supreme self within see now don't get intimidated by this because this takes a lot of time and effort to understand but vedanta actually explains the real source origin of this world the purpose of life is self realization and the self is the underlying reality and they bring in the concept of maya maya means yaha means that ma means not that which is not so what they say is this world that you're experiencing is not the reality it is an illusion so i know that seems really difficult to swallow but you have to try and understand what they're saying it's not and he explains it step by step so you get a complete picture and you are inspired to one day achieve that state so like i told you the whole flavor of these sessions is to help you evolve as a human being and you don't have to worry about self realization the beauty is it will help you in your day to day life as it has helped innumerable people you understand so you just have to be committed to the study get up early in the morning those of you who are not doing it read the text and you'll be well on your way 